Looks All right, welcome everyone. Um, we'll just get a bit a second, everyone's coming in. Um, this is session IC86, on-time mobility, a 23-year perspective. Um, you can type all your questions in the chat. Uh, my name is Courtney. I'll be the moderator today, and I'll be providing the CEU code at the end. Um, please just be sure to stay on mute. Um, again, we'll be monitoring questions through the chat, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Scott and Matt. All right, thank you, Courtney. Um, I wanna begin by saying uh, first, thank you to ISS for allowing us to present and share our story out here um, and for maneuvering through the last uh, couple of years and what a world pandemic puts to you, um, those challenges. And so I wanna tell them thank you for that. And again, we're honored. And again, I'm honored for Shiners allowing me to share our story too um, and be their voice. Um, I can't say enough in regards to the uh, the, Lectures of the past two days, they've been outstanding. Um, I've been glued to the screen, which is tough for me to do in the first place, uh, just because I'm a guy that needs to get up and move around. Um, but it's been great. Feel like I've been drinking from the um, from the fire hose, but great information. I love to see the passion and I love to see everything that's with it. So again, great two days. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Scott Jerome. I'm a physical therapist here at Shriners Hospitals uh, here in Salt Lake City. Um, I have been a pediatric physical therapist for the last 21 years. Um, I, I cut my teeth originally at Shriners Hospital from 2000 to 2004. Um, I went to Children with Special Health Care Needs, which is with the state of Utah, where I served the rural communities uh, throughout the state. Through this, uh, Shriners has always been uh, mentors of mine in regards to the seating and mobility world. Um, so I did that for seven years. During that time, I had the opportunities to work. And we had a neonatal follow-up group at that time. And that is where I found my love for um, early, uh, early development, normal development, and then um, better understanding of what our children and our patients go through when they don't hit those developmental milestones. I did a small stint in home care and then came back to Shriners in 2016. Um, back to the seating and mobility department. And so we'll share a little bit of that as we go. Um, here we go. Let's go for it. Uh, here's my disclosure. Here's our disclosure page. We have no. Um, here, I'm going to move this a little bit. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. So we have, there's our disclosure statement. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a little start of who we are. This is a promotional video that um, our business development offices uses to um, bring in referrals to our seating and mobility department specifically. Hi, I'm Matt Lowell. I'm a physical therapist here at Shriners Hospital for Children, and I manage our uh, wheelchair seating, positioning, and mobility program. Our program has been at the hospital since 1998 and consists of four full-time physical therapists, two full-time technicians, and one and a half coordinators. Everything needs to be very individualized to the child, where they are in their development, as well as what orthopedic supports they need. We are dedicated therapists, both to pediatrics and to wheelchair seating and positioning. Um, we do this in a comprehensive method with our therapists here in the hospital, with our doctors, as well as we uh, collaborate well with one another here in the clinic, um, all with your child in mind. We also have a full uh, shop and technicians to provide custom fabrication. So if our patients need a product that doesn't exist, oftentimes we can invent, modify, or create something here uh, to provide for that. We try to follow up about a couple times a year just to make sure that the chair is still fitting and we can make adjustments and just really customize and tailor the fit to every kid. The Special Needs Car Seat Clinic is a clinic that has both a practitioner either a medical doctor or a nurse practitioner, a physical therapist, and a car seat technician who work as a team to decide on the best car seat available for your child's safe transportation. Here at Shriners, we focus on innovation and looking at the next and most up and coming research. And what we've done with that is we've really sought out options for early mobility. Here at Shriner Seating and Mobility, we have a lifespan of mobility options for kids because in the adult world, they're well taken care of. So now we have infant, uh, toddler, children, adolescents, and adult 
taken care of at least for mobility tools that we can access for them to participate in mobility and independence. Okay, so there's just a little intro of this. And so what I wanted to start is I was like, well, why are we doing this um, presentation? And again, what we've learned is we're, we are able to treat in a little bit of a unique um, setting in regards to with it being Shriners Hospital, we do have a charitable aspect of things. And then again, as we've went through the last two days, um, I've heard, I wanna echo exactly what's been said over, I mean, great presentations in regards to there needs to be a very team aspect oriented approach to this. And that's what, in, in, in what the goal in mind is that we're going to be successful if our clients are successful and our clients are our children, these patients and the families that they, that we serve. And so what we need to do that is that we're, we're very team oriented in, reg in regards to that. So with us able to treat in this unique setting, with that charitable time, it does give us a little bit more time to be innovative. It does give us a little bit more time to really um, assess and evaluate our um, our processes throughout the day and then revamp them. It got a lot like everybody else. And it is, we're treating in regardless to their ability to pay. And we felt since we have that luxury, what we wanted to do is we wanted to share what we found um, because we have that. However, um, I do want you to know too, that we also have an understanding of the frustrations and some of the obstacles that we're all going through and that I've heard through the last couple of days. And I do need to go back and say, it's been motivating. It's been comforting to know that you're not alone. Sometimes you feel like you're alone when you're doing these letters of medical necessity. Um, you're doing your, your electronic records, you're doing your Medicaid, et cetera. And it feels like appeal after appeal after appeal. So I want you to understand that we're in the trenches with you all, but if we can all do this together, we do have some things that we need to move forward. And that's why we felt like we were able to help in regards to, and maybe present our story a little bit and see if there's anything we can help you. Um, now on the other side, I am doing this a little bit selfishly because we've learned that we need to better objective, uh, objectify what we're doing. Um, we've been doing this for a while. We need to say why it works and we need to put objective numbers to that. So I will be most likely reaching out to the people that I've seen in the last few days um, in regards to getting their two cents. And I hopefully um, after this, I hope you still answer your phone or see my email and still answer that. But I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I've been very motivated for that. Um, go to the great Albert Einstein. We learned from yesterday. We live for today and we hope for tomorrow. So let's jump into this. Okay. Here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a very brief history of how this has started because it does play into how we actually uh, carry out our day to day treatment. So uh, Dr. Destu, he is an orthopedic surgeon that practiced in the Canadian area and he uh, orthopedic surgeon spines and his idea. He had a he had a brainchild in 95. Um, that he was like, if I'm doing spinal surgery on these patients, why would I be putting back into the same seating system? And Dr. Armstrong, who was our chief of staff at that time, he, he also orthopedic surgeon, uh, was practicing with Dr. DeStube and learning from him both in the Canadian and then down here in our Salt Lake City area, he, he bought into that. And we were able to sell that to Craig Patchen at that time, who was our chief administrator. And he says, um, yeah, it, after three years, he goes, I think that's a great idea. And so he goes to Rich Grizar. Uh, he's an occupational therapist as well as a um, prosthetics and orthotics and he's the head of the therapy department at that time he goes you know a guy he's like I know a guy and so that's where Ken Kazol comes in here and he's a great friend of Matt he's been in, and, and myself and he's been our mentor for a while and Matt's been a mentor of mine as you kind of see how this goes and so they're like we're going to buy into this and Ken he's a mechanical engineer initially he works in some of work in the workplace settings and he understands that he needs, he, he feels like he needs to become an occupational therapist. So we have a seating and mobility department that has that engineering side as well as that therapeutic side. And after three years, Shriners is like, we are on board. And so they said, Ken, we're going to give you a closet. And so we're getting ready to go and we're going to shoot, we're going to give you a closet. And then, and then he grows right away. So when you grow, you get two closets. So we started out with that. However, from 98 to 2005, Matt Lowell, and he is helping today in regards to um, trying to answer the questions in the chat. So if you have questions, send it that way. But he's our fearless leader. 
And Matt's been a mentor of mine since we started here in 2000, since I've started in 2000 in my CEO ability, and he continues to lead us today. And so we continue to see growth. And that's all I wanted to show you to the point of these guys get together and we have two therapists, we grow to two techs, and then we have a, we have a, a office administrator. And this is Esther. And so we've grown and there continues to be a need and we're continuing to see some things. And we're trying to revamp our, our treatment ideas. And this is how this goes. Dora later replaces, I have Dora here. I'm trying to find my thing. We have Dora here. She replaces uh, Esther. And the reason I bring Dora in is she's great. And she's since worked to our business promotion offices and has been able to promote us as well, which continues to allow growth. And growth comes fast again. In 2016 is when I finally come in. And so um, I, I went to the interview with Ken and Matt. And as I had said, we've had a relationship ever since we started in 2000. And I, they were asking me to come back. I was actually going to the interview to say no, because I've been there and done that. However, we were able to be very critical in regards to, you have some great information here. You need to share that. And at that time, there was a six to nine month backlog. I wanna say it's closer to nine. And they're like, we cannot do that unless we grab another therapist. And so if you come back, maybe that's what we can do. And throughout these, and up until this time, that allowed me to get my hands on wheelchairs and some of the, those are there. And then we allowed them to do their innovation and they're leading that way. Um, since that time, we grew to another therapist and this is Claire Banky, And she is a very, she's a young and enthusiastic, smart young therapist that's jumped into our career, into our group and our team. And they've, and she's been a great addition to us. And then during this time, and even before, as we were developing this lecture, Ken, he has since retired at that time. And so we had, we replaced him with Jen Janowitz, again, a young therapist who's had some great um, pediatric experience that we were able to bring over into the seating and mobility world. Um, this is me and both my chins, which is difficult to, so let's move on. We can't do this alone, again. This is a team aspect. And so we got to do this together. And, and we have a very strong team aspect and we have um, we need support. And so this is Gary. Gary, we have an ATP in our office and we have an up and coming ATP in Jesus. And Gary was instrumental in helping me throughout the rural communities back in that time. And we were able to um, slowly merge him into our team. And that strengthens us greatly. We have two hospital, we have two office administrators here in Olivia Sauer and Alejandra Lenato. And again, they try to keep us, our paperwork moving forward, our patients coming in, our patients getting out and our patients getting back. And so to keep up this crowd of four therapists and two techs and ATP involved, that's a tough job as it is. I need to share that they're also child passenger safety technicians. And that leads us into our car seat uh, team. And we meet, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. And again, our car seat team is a team effort. There's a lot of people that can get involved with that, and we need it in regards to fulfilling that need. So, again, that was just a real brief um, idea of where we came from, but it does kind of tell our story a little bit. And again, it echoes um, that none of these things happened overnight that we're sharing with you. So, they've taken some time. Um, here's our services that we do. And again, we've grown since the two closets um, and Ken and Matt opening the doors. So we do wheelchair assessments. Again, um, we do wheelchair fits and we'll talk everything, every wheelchair we assess for, we fit and we do that back in our offices. We do follow-ups. I loved hearing, um, I think it was in the data that are the importance of large data and we're the discussion of follow-ups and the importance of that has come in. So we have done that for a great number of years. And so that's been great. We have listed a car seat clinic because we were being asked a lot of questions on how do we transport our kids back and forth safely. And we couldn't say, I don't know anymore. We have some camps here at Shriners Hospital. Again, our families sometimes feel like they're on an island and when they're by themselves. So if we bring these groups together, that's a, a very empowering. And again, that's a great word that I've heard in the last few days. It's very empowering. And then we've kind of happened upon some seasonal clinics that um, it's a Halloween clinic in regards to um, questions and concerns that we heard from our families and providing that wraparound care. So I wanna show you our numbers just really quick, just so you see how many wheelchairs we get to touch because 
I need a lot of practice and I need to make a lot of mistakes. And from those mistakes, I learn a lot. So I need a bunch of repetitions like everybody does. And so I originally, when we did this, we were looking at 2020. So I need to throw in our 2019 numbers uh, because 2020 was a little bit of a different year. Um, and so it looks like we rebound a little bit, but what I want to share here on this slide is um, anytime you see a donor wheelchair, those are wheelchairs that we donate. Okay. Um, when you see an insurance chair, that is where we go through a vendor. And so we do not sell any wheelchairs at Shriners. What we do is we have a local vendor. We're very close with our local vendors and we will go through that um, evaluation, submit um, and delivery process with them. And then you see our car seats. And so we've rebounded, you know, we've, we do, you know, we're almost right on with our donors. We did last year, our insurance, we issued wheelchairs, we went up in our car seat. We really, we we're just getting better at our car seat clinics and whatnot. Every donation or any insurance wheelchair that we do, we fit. We are a little bit of a control freak and, that, and that's okay because if we're gonna evaluate for it, we wanna get to it and we wanna fit that wheelchair. And again, I'm preaching to the choir, I know, after watching those three days and, and that's gonna give us a better product. The follow-up, again, that's been outstanding. So we're calling it a reassessment now. And what we've learned, just a little note here is, um, these are important in regards to a follow-up and we should be getting paid for that. And we're slowly, trainers are slowly working into the billing world or feels like it's been slow, it's been a while. But again, these things do work. And then as we look at our numbers again, uh, the, our camps, our Halloween and our Halloween clinic, that has been hit, our, our camps a little bit harder by uh, the pandemic versus our clinics. We've been able to continue with those. So um, we get a lot of touches on wheelchairs um, different um, scenarios of mobility opportunities that we get to do. Okay, where did our growth come from? Again, here's where we, we, we basically started with day-to-day -day treatment. When we opened up two closets, it was day-to-day -day treatment. Um, here's where we had our nice benefit. We were able to really listen to our patient populations and our community need. And then again, from there, we develop our product. And, and, and let me go back in regards to looking at our patient population, our community need, we really were able to kind of listen to not just our patients, but we were listening to what was going on in the community and we were able to find needs. Um, so that allows us to put in some programs and some product development. Um, if we don't, if we can't find it and purchase it, we look to develop it. And that's been really nice. We implement it. And this really should be, this should be a circle, probably more than anything. We implement it find out what's working, what's not working. And then we kind of throw it right back into our day-to-day -day treatment, see if it works and whatnot. And so again, with us having a little bit of a luxury in regards to reaching out and having the, um, having a little bit more time or maybe having a little bit more um, finance, we, we, we wanna share what our bumps and bruises have been along the way. And so if you have any questions in regards to any of these services, we would love to help you. And if you're thinking about starting any of them, we would love to help you in regards to um, how to start them or what potential barriers you might find or, or, or difficulties. Again, I'm preaching to the choir here, but sometimes I feel like I put this slide up and I, I giggle about it a little bit more because we should be getting paid for this because this is very obvious. And when I say pay, I'm, I'm talking about our funding sources. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to do this, but again, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but here's what we've learned. Children grow and they develop. You can't deliver a chair on year one and think that that same chair is going to be working on year five when we're saying that you need a five-year idea. They really do. And they progress. And, and unfortunately, some of our disease process, they, they, our kids may regress and, and we need to be involved in that. And um, that's where that follow-up is incredibly important. Um, again, preaching to the choir, but a proper evaluation and a proper fit is critical for success. Um, we don't want product disuse. Um, we want to do it right and we want to be efficient. Um, here's what's been outstanding. I love the integration in the, what's being used in the school and what's being used in, in play lectures that were done this week. I've wanted to list all of the presenters this week, but it would just, it, the time I just want to say that I, I loved it. I loved seeing the videos and those. 
But if we have increased participation, we have increased development and we have the literature out there to show us that. And then what we've learned probably a little bit more since we've been able to kind of decrease on our backlog and we've had more support at the hospital is simple training can make all the difference in the world, all with our idea of not having product disuse. That's, that's incredibly expensive and we don't want to do that. Oops, sorry. Um, how do we address what we learn? So again, this is how our clinic is set up. And um, I've learned a lot from this slide and I hope that I'm able to bring that to you. Um, we do two hour appointments um, at first. I thought that that was a lot when I came back. I was like, do we really need two hour appointments? I'm gonna say yes. We do follow up appointments. Again, we've heard that kids grow and they develop. And so we need to change their device as we go. And again, we are incredibly successful on a clinical basis. And so we've seen that and we do need to start objectifying that of how successful that is. Um, and then we do training. And usually that's like about a one hour plus minus. That's what young people are able to tolerate, okay? And so here, here's my argument when I'm saying, um, do we need two hours? And we're like, yes, yes. And sometimes we've even fought within our Shriner system to say, we need two hours. And if we can do a complete assessment and we can do a complete fit and we do a proper follow-up, I would be willing to argue that we are saving many, many hours throughout a year in regards to courting, coordinating the different players involved. And again, we do have a strong relationship with our vendors and our manufacturers and, and those. And I would say that if we have these set times of these follow-up, let's say five hours a year, I promise you that it's going to be much less time spent in getting the job done correctly than if you're going to try to coordinate that throughout the year at different places, different times, and different people meeting at different times. Um, so we want to say that if you're doing this as well, you're also that piece of equipment that was purchased, um, the, the people that you purchased it for are using it and it's a useful piece of equipment. Um, again, to echo throughout the week, it, we are only successful as if the child that we are working with is successful. And if that family is successful, that is what is success for us. And, um, and we can do it. Um, and we can be fiscally responsible as well. So keep in mind again throughout our slides, even though we have that charitable aspect of things, we are stakeholders in this too at Shriners. And so we, if, if we can serve five kids or we can serve 10 kids, we are going to choose 10 kids all the time. And so we are responsible for this. So we are in the same game when we're talking about this. So we, and again, I think echoing throughout the week, um, we need to continue to fight. I think sometimes we're, um, I was getting tired um, of all those appeals and, and uh, what are we fighting for? And then it's nice to hear that families are in the game. But then I think also, especially with some of the on time, the early on time mobility and Dr. Feldner, Dr. Logan, Andrina Sabet, and Jennifer Tucker, I love that. However, at the end of that, I realize that we have more work to do in relarge to get that. And we need to continue the fight here that these times are necessary and that our time is valuable to do it right for our client for success. So I just wanted to say that in there and, and you've given us new energy in regards to that. So thank you. Um, here's what we do. And this is, again, I'm going to slow down here a little bit because I want to show some of the, of what we're seeing, but we do a high performance and a custom bound fit. We've talked about that. If we don't have it, we do product development. So we will, and, or we're going to do a loaner library so that, Family, some things that you don't need on a daily basis, but you need every once in a while. We're going to give you access to that. Um, again, we were being asked a lot in regards to how do we get our kids here safely? How do we get them home safely? We said, I don't know, for many years. Um, so we had to develop a way to do that. We have camps, and I'm excited to share that with you. We do have a Halloween costume clinic. I'd love to share that with you because I think that's something that you can definitely do in your hometown. And then again, uh, early mo mobility. I think I'm going to scratch early mobility from my vocabulary now. I am an on-time mobility person. Um, it makes sense, right? And I'll talk about that more on that slide. Um, we need to get these on time and we, we, we have the knowledge and, and we're getting the tools and, and they're getting better. So here's what I want to say here. Again, I'm preaching to the choir here. Everybody understands in this group that this 
little guy's wheelchair needs to be just as efficient of a push as this young lady's uh, wheelchair and athletics and the whole bit. There's going to be a lot of pushes on that shoulder, and we want that 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 to be learned. Um, and then we understand the complexity of what we're looking at of these young people and what they need. Here's where, as a therapist, that um, I've strengthened my part in the team in regards to when I say team, I'm talking about our vendors that we're um, submitting to our payers for, um, our manufacturers um, that we're using their product and we need to know about them. We've developed nice relationships because I need to know about their products. And then us stepping in as therapists and turning the wrenches right next to our uh, ATPs, um, we've learned how to manipulate the products for each specific patient that we have. And that strengthens my role in regards to that team aspect. Um, before I knew how to do that, I was a little bit, I was more at the mercy of the vendors or the ATPs or the manufacturers in regards to how it's going to um, work for our patient. And that's where it's strengthened. Again, in this team aspect, this is what's happened. Um, it's, it's some front end work. Um, you, if, if there are some younger therapists out there, I will tell you, um, I believe that you will have much more success if you educate yourself on the products, you make the calls to your vendors and get to know them well, you talk with the manufacturers when you have a question about the product, you will become a stronger person in that team aspect. And that, and really with our goal in mind is for our child to be, the child that we're seeing to be successful. And again, successful is participation. And it really starts right here. So with that team aspect, that's where I become a stronger. And I thought I knew something when I came back in 2016 in regards to wheelchairs. But when you start putting them together and working problems forward and backwards, um, I did not know much about them. If you do not know much about wheelchairs and it's very new to you, don't be afraid to ask for help. Again, that's another thing that's been in, incredibly empowering for me as a as made a better part of the team. And again, our goal is for our client to be successful. So I cannot say enough about that. Um, I think I'm there. Okay, um, product development. So if we don't have what we need in regards to, if we don't have what we need in regards to uh, meeting our patient's needs, uh, we, we will make it or we'll do the best we can or we'll use what we have uh, to make it. And so this is just a simple Shriners ankle lobes, you know, we and so that's a little bit. And again, these are not one size fits all. You do it individually to every patient. Uh, we here we've used a Miller spring and we've made our uh, lower extremity footrest dynamic by using that Miller spring in this. Um, we love our ankle huggers, but sometimes we're going to switch them around different ways, depending upon the pole. And, and so these are just some of the very small things that we've done. Um, I'll never, I'll never forget the first day that we started drilling that I was up at Shriners and we go drilling into a very expensive wheelchair, but if it's not fitting for our patient, we're going to make it fit and we're going to drill holes and everything. And that's okay. If you know what you're doing, I had a lot of help right behind me. Um, we do have some products. Here's another product. This is a funny one. I'm um, down here. The, and if you look at the beach stroller, that's a Convey Metro stroller. And um, what we did is we had a lot of families that were going, hey, we'd like to go to the beach. And hey, we'd like to travel. And do you have something? And we're like, mm, I don't know. And so um, what we've done with this, the Convey stroller, is we've learned how to have an interchangeable axle that allows you to put on your beach wheelchairs when you're at the beach. Uh, you take your stroller on your vacation. And when you're not on the beach, you can pull that um, you can pull that axle out and you can go ahead and put back on the uh, Metro stroller uh, wheels and you can maneuver yourself throughout town. So again, up here, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. This is, a, I think, our pride and joy in which when I came back and really started looking at on-time mobility, um, I was very much wowed by what kids are able to do. And um, again, this is a little bit more. It's also a piece that's transportable and breaks down some barriers so that when you are having that talk of um, early mobility or on-time mobility with families, and we've learned how important it is to talk with families and get them on board for the success. This is our little go chair and we'll talk about that. It's a, it's a modified go chair and we've spoken with pride with that. 
And then again, I wanted, we wanted to try and push um, the limits of how, how small we can get young people into mobility and what they're able to do. And we need to look at that and objectify it and look at it more um, specifically to see how to be successful with this and uh, what our expectations should be. We looked at that. And then finally, there's some products that we know that young people don't need on a daily basis or that they're on the fence in regards to purchase. And so the free wheel is one of those. And that's an example I used here. It's a great product. Um, however, family, it is expensive and people are a little unsure in regards to if they wanna purchase it or not. So we're like, hey, how about on a loaner basis? You go ahead and take this out and uh, try it. And if it's something that you find is useful or you don't, you can make your decisions uh, decisions on how, if you want to finance that or not. And so that's been beneficial to us. Okay. Real briefly, this could be a whole lecture in itself. And this is something that um, I tripped over as a therapist. I was the new person on board and we found out we need a car seat clinic. And so with me being the new guy on board, I had to raise my hand. Um, However, what I've learned from this is amazing. Real quickly, in general, car seats with our uh, typical developing children, those are installed improperly, wrong. Um, well, our data is moving around and it's getting better, but it was as high as 75% not too long ago, and it might be around 60% now. So a lot of misuse of car seats. A um, lot of information. We love our cars, we love our roads, and there's a lot of data that if you're in a car seat, and it's installed properly and it fits properly, you have a much uh, decreased chance of injury or death. Very objective. So why not the, uh, provide that to our kids who are too big for conventionally um, conventional car seats or commercial owned car seats? So we started this in 2016. We started collecting data. Our kids with special needs, they are being transported improperly, at least on our first visit. Um, it's lowered to 80% of the time, but it was as high as 90 and 95% of the time. And I think now the clinic's been around four, almost, are we coming on um, almost five years now? Um, we've, st we've decreased that number just a little bit, at least for the populations that we are getting back. So this is incredible. Um, we are all child passenger safety technicians. So um, like I said, our office, and administrators who are in there who are keeping us on, on task, they also are able to jump out and check car seats. We've jumped in with the Utah Highway Safety Offices and we are we provide two instructors from our hospital to help with um, this problem in the community. And this has been an incredible help for our families and I had no clue the difficulties that they were going through. Uh, this is incredibly doable and we've had some bumps and bruises along the way and we partner with the local hospitals and we park partner with the local health and safety departments. And this has been incredibly useful. So please, if this is something you're interested, in, I would love to help you with this. And it is needed. Um, just going back. We have a clinic uh, two times a month that we see kids and we'll, we'll do that. Escaping. Again, that could be a whole lecture. Um, with this slide, um, I, I do very little. Matt, who's our fearless leader running the chat room, he has been more involved with this in regards to um, camps, as well as Loring Hollingshead, our recreational therapist, and this has been outstanding, but I cannot do it justice, so I'm going to let this run. The time for the river is back again, but sadly, this will be my last summer. I have had the most amazing time of my life on the river, floating down the desolate canyons and singing songs with my crazy friends. I cannot explain how much Unlimited has done for me and changed my whole perspective on being an amputee. I can honestly say I really like being an amputee now and I'm comfortable with who I am. I never was like that before camp. Um, definitely tried to hide the fact that I was an amputee. I think I honestly didn't want to accept it myself. All throughout middle school, high school, I was trying to hide it. But after I got back from camp, I realized I didn't need to do that anymore because this is who I was and I had learned how to love myself. I will come back as a counselor to give back to Unlimited Camp and help other kids find out what they're truly capable of. I never even thought I could do half of what I accomplished at Unlimited Camp. 
such as ski a double blue mountain or whitewater raft the Green River. I will always have a special place in my heart for camp because it has helped me make who I am today. Without camp, I would think of myself as a girl with one leg. Instead, I am just like any other girl, but with a badass leg. So many amputees need to realize that they are just like anyone else and they can do whatever their heart desires and that is exactly what Unlimited Camp does. It helps you realize who you are and what you can do. I will gladly give up my spot at camp just for another camper to experience the love that camp gives. Nothing else matters when you're out there. All worries or anything that you struggle with blows away with the warm summer air and sinks under the cool river water. I would love to attend the summer unlimited camp one last time as a camper since I was planning on coming when I'm 21 to feel the love of hope and friendship, defeat the odds, go further than I think my limitations are, wake up to a rising sun, a beautiful view to the sound of Matt yelling hot chocolate and fruit and taste the river bacon again because not much is better than that. It's hard to not come back from camp and does not see everybody for such a long time. We shared such a special bond with all of the counselors, all of the campers. Um, I am very grateful that I actually met one of my best friends at camp. Uh, her name is Oakley. Um, despite the 1900 mile difference from Utah to Georgia, we have managed to stay in touch in each other's lives. And in fact, she was just here in Georgia. Um, she was in my wedding. She was at the, my bachelorette trip. And I'm just so grateful for everything that camp has done for me. So just thank you, Shriners. Thank you, Matt. Love you all. So moral of the story, you come home with more than just memories and a fake river tan. <laughs> so that was Sam. She has grown up to be a beautiful young lady. And this is her, her husband, Colton. And when she was talking about her buddy, there's her buddy, Oakley. And there's Sam in that raft. And again, I have little involvement, but our, our sometimes our families, um, we get to see them every day and they get to see each other in the hallway, but I do feel like they feel like they're on an island. And again, when you're looking at adolescence, this is this camp is a lot of times a pre-adolescence, adolescence. So you get them together and they realize they're not alone. It's incredibly empowering. Again, uh, this is success. This is incredibly successful. So. Here's another one. Um, at Shriners, uh, Halloween is a big deal. I'm not good at dressing up. I'm getting better at dressing up. Um, it's a big deal. And we would be working through half the day and then we'd have our party for our families at the second half of the day. And a lot of times we'd approach our families and we'd ask the kids, are you excited about Halloween? And um, the, the response was less than enthusiastic. Um, again, Halloween is a difficult holiday. And when you have to go upstairs to get to a front door or you have to go through an apartment complex or all the barriers um, that you notice, um, we realized that we needed to bring Halloween to them. And again, we listen to our families and we're always rewarded more. I feel like I get more out of the day than the kids do sometimes what I provide. And I think this is incredibly one of those. And I'm going to let you, I'm going to share this story first. And then we'll talk about it a little bit more afterwards. Live from downtown Salt Lake City, this is 2 News at 6. One hospital is working to make Halloween a little more inclusive. How they're making sure kids who rely on their wheelchairs to still have something fun to wear coming up next. Hey, making Halloween more inclusive, a clinic at Salt Lake Children's Hospital going above and beyond to make sure the kids who rely on wheelchairs don't miss out, out, miss out on any Halloween fun. This is awesome. Ariel Harrison spoke to a family who's excited for trick-or-treating once again this year thanks to the help of staff at Shriners. Halloween for kids in wheelchairs can get tricky, which is why Shriners Hospital here in Salt Lake holds its costume clinic for its young patients so kids like Cole Spencer don't have to miss out on any of the spooky fun. Don't let the costume fool you. Does my breathing sound like a real gorilla? This is Cole Spencer, <laughs> a lively and spunky seven-year-old. And I just lost it, too. Who's excited for all things Halloween. Candy and... 
costumes and scaring people. And this year, thanks to the help from his mom and staff at Shriners, his wheelchair is transforming for a costume that is nothing short of show-stopping. He was very excited. He wanted to be a gorilla, and so we thought, well, there's King Kong. That was perfect. This is just right up his alley. He loves to pretend, and he loves just the whole magic of Halloween. Matt Lowell is part of the staff at Shriners that oversees the clinic to create these costumes that work with wheelchairs. It'd be really great if we had that kind of skill to build costumes, and we said, well, we know guys that can build costumes. <laughs> they work with kids like Cole and their families. Then I wouldn't know what I wanted to be in the front of me and the back, like a forest. With these costumes, it brings people out of their house. They come and check it out, and it really makes a big difference. Inclusive trick-or-treating, an experience that's priceless to parents like Joanne. Just how, how they get to be a kid. Mom, do not and cry. They get to forget about their worries and the hard things that they have to deal with every day. Seriously, Mom, do not cry in this. <laughs> Yes, so very incredible what they're able to pull off. I do know that Halloween stores in the area actually donate some of their proceeds. And this year alone, I was told that they've given three quarters of a million dollars this year alone. Reporting in Salt Lake, Ariel Harrison, KUTV 2 News. Mom, don't cry. It's going to be a good year out there. Awesome costumes. Well, this is the sixth year for the costume clinic and the third year participating for Cole. Staff tell us they've built around 200 costumes so far throughout the years, starting with just eight kids and now closer to 40 every year. Again, this, I, I have to correct some of the numbers. Uh, we got to say thank you to the spirit of children. They have supported this greatly over the last uh, six years. Um, and they have donated three quarters of a million dollar to us. And there's, if you've seen Spirit of Halloween stores, that is what they were discussing. So that's been over since the time. It's not in one year. But the point of that, both with our camps and both with our Halloween costume clinic, we receive a lot of money when you start to get your word out of what you're doing and the differences that it makes for our clients to be successful, our kids to be successful and their families. Um, people will support you. And so this is a nice one to start with if you want. As you heard, and just like you said, Matt said, we started with eight kids and we usually would do this on one day and now we're up to 40 kids. And we tried to do this in a day. Again, a world pandemic will kick that off. On, they'll uh, make, us, uh, make that difficult for you. However, we are, we're up to 40 kids and, and it's, a, it's a great day. It's an exhausting day. It's an exhausting week. We've done it over a month, but people will support you on this and people will support you in camp. And so we receive a lot of donated monies that way. This is a nice way to start. And again, um, that's something to look into. Um, we're more than willing to help you with that. That has grown and we get more and we get a lot of coverage on that too. We've gotten some national coverage on two occasions, I think, and then multiple local coverage every year. Again, that will, and the community will support you on helping your community that you're providing with. Uh, great. And I can even see that with some of our adults in uh, different mobility devices, too, that would be helpful. So either way, moving on. Um, here's been a little part of the team that I've really dove into with both feet. And it was again, it started in regards to um, looking at the go chair. We've had we have about 500 of these out over 500 of these out. And we do need to retrospectively look at it and what the benefit is. And this wowed me. And I would look at young people, we would put them in it. And Shredders allowed me to take some time to do it. And Matt and Ken allowed me to build and kind of put those in and really manipulate this and really find out the benefits of it. And the benefits of it is that it's very, um, it's small. Uh, these are the earlier bases, um, the go chair bases, if you can see that. Um, they don't longer make those uh, rascals. Um, they have those. We bought up every single one we could find. And I think we're down to less than 10, possibly less than five after this last couple months. And basically what is done is this is the adult seat. It's taken off. We take the base of the base plate off. And if you could see, this is just basically a zippy TS uh, framing. Um, and then we put seating on it. Um, this is an incredible chair. And as I've watched it and learned over it, this has been motivating for me. And then when I see what young people are able to do, and we've given a lot of opportunities 
I love the idea of the discussion throughout the week of expectation. We got to have incredibly good. We have to we have to discuss with the family's expectations in regards to early driving, expectations in regards to um, on time mobility, smaller, and we need to learn more about this and objectify it a little bit more. Um, because I've seen the opportunity of there's young people that would not have been given the chance to participate in this just based upon our current system. And when you let them practice and get repetition and um, what every typically developing child does as well, they get better at it. And some have become functional drivers. We've watched some that have not become, but maybe recreational drivers or you know exploratory as we've discussed this week. But again, the value that it provides is incredible. And in regards to expectation, if I was to look at what we've looked, we've started this, we, we've been working on this the last couple of years in regards to putting young people. We started with uh, putting 20 um, typically developing kids uh, ages five to five months to 15 months and see what that interaction, interaction of a joystick looks like in a one 10 minute interval and find out what, what is going on and considering their early, their, uh, early fine motor, gross motor, visual uh, motor and um, uh, abilities. And what is a proper time? When are they ready uh, developmentally? And again, we can all agree that we can have a, uh, an older child that is developmentally younger, but we need to have an idea of what is coming. Um, we've also put, again, I'm talking, we call this the baby bug in our place. We, we have put the baby bug in some homes in regards to, um, let me go back to the typically developing and again, expectation. <laughs> Even our very young kids that were able to move it, if I had the video of myself or a parent for the first minute of every minute of that video, what we would do is we would hold our hands out. And we'd be like, as soon as they moved, we'd be like, come here. And that is a high level skill in regards to mobility. So even my expectation has changed of how this process develops. Um, we have put this in the, going back, we have put this in um, some kids' homes that have had um, motor impairments and watching what they do. And then we're gonna watch what how well they do if we expose them to this, how well they do in this in regards to. And so we're learning a lot and we're starting to put things down and objectively we can, we're showing some pretty fun benefits. And so more to come on that, but all I'm doing is echoing is saying, yes, this is where we have a lot of work to do. We need to continue to find products and, um, and, and move forward in regards to providing this, these devices to our families and to our kids for them to be successful. So again, very fun, very, that just fun. Again, I name it. So here's a, you know, I'm going to give you a, let's give it, here's a new story that was done on it. And this is Clara and she's been uh, involved with us. We had this in our home initially and we just transitioned, trans let me try that again, transitioned her into a go chair and it's been um, incredibly successful. Um, I'll just let it run. This may appear to be a toddler just having a little bit of fun, but in this case, there's so much more going on than that. As new specialist Heather Simonson explains, a new invention is helping this little girl learn and grow. Get it. Oh, oh. Of all the things. This is our little Clara. Shelby Stanger thought she'd teach her toddler. Oh, oh, oh. Driving. Oh, oh, oh wasn't one of them. A lot of people just say, oh, how cute. They just think it's a cute little toy. And I'm like, it does so much more. Clara has a condition that causes joint stiffness, making range of motion limited. The baby bug created at Shriners Hospitals for Children, Salt Lake City, is an adapted baby seat on wheels. You ready? Should we go get mom? And so it's incredibly important that a child moves on their own. Scott Jerome, a physical therapist, says it helps babies who are too little for a wheelchair move independently when a condition interferes with meeting early milestones, like crawling. If you understand what kids' jobs are to do, is to explore and investigate things. And if you're not moving or you're not moving away from your parent, then you're not able to do that. The device helps her make cognitive connections related to speech and build physical strength. She also learns cause and effect. 
You're real good at backwards. Clara's doctors hope she'll one day walk on her own, and the baby bug nurtures that desire of independent movement. If we continue to promote every opportunity for her to go, she will reach her full potential. So far, Clara... But she kind of has a mind of her own. ...and her parents are enjoying life in the fast lane. <laughs> That's so fun. It helps her kind of see things differently rather than just be carried around by us all the time or sat in her high chair. No matter what curves lie in the road ahead... Okay. With Clara at the wheel... You don't have to walk to have a good quality of life. She's got this. It makes my heart so happy to see her be, be able to play, be able to get around. Heather Simonson, Boo. KSL 5 News. Cheeks. The next step for Clara is a specially modified go chair. It's a toddler's first wheelchair. The ultimate goal is to make the baby bug available to all the patients at Shriners who would benefit. Um, anything that we're developing. The next step for Clara is a specially modified go chair. I want to go back. Oh. Let's stay here. Um, anything we do at Trainers, we, our goal is really to allow accessibility to all. And so as I start to move these things out, um, there's really not a whole bunch of secrets. Uh, we are trying to, we've tried to send the baby bug to some other places and see if it can be reproduced. Um, what we do is we grab a lot of the motors and whatnot, uh, the motors, uh, we've done a lot in regards to the baby bug. Um, that's not the focus of this. And, but it, what we, our goal is, is to allow this to be accessible to as many people as we can. Um, and so with that being said, we'll just stay there. There's so much to be said, but that's going to be at another time. I need to give a, a our early, our on-time mobility options. I need to give a huge shout out to, uh, Permobile. And we, we all want to give a shout out to that. They've, they've taken on the FDA and they've taken on um, all that is um, needed to be, which I've learned is very difficult to get from idea to production to availability to our families. And so I got to I gotta say thank you for doing that. And, and thanks for continuing to push this movement forward because we cannot get tired. Um, some days you get tired and you wonder why you're doing this. And then you see what happens with our kids and you see other professionals that are backing um, and we got, we cannot get tired and keep moving forward. So thanks to Permobile for that. Uh, thanks to the Go Baby Go and their program and Dr. Galloway and all his crew that has moved things forward and um, really empowering families to start asking for product. That has been a big deal. Um, and just allowing something to be so accessible to allow early uh, on-time mobility um, again, that is a nice movement that we need to continue to do, and we need to continue to do that. Again, we're here in the United States. Um, here at Shriners, we wanted to purchase uh, uh, these items, the Bugsy and the, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. Help me out in the chat room with that. But we wanted to purchase one of these because they are the idea of that. However, they said, you bet you can purchase them up in Canada. However, um, you got to come and grab them at the border. That's not available to us. And so that's frustrating. But again, let's give a shout out here. Um, this is a Cosmo. Um, they're not making these anymore because they, from what I understand, and again, I need, I, I, they're not making, they're, they're not great sellers. And again, we, this is a little bit of, we inspired this. They have a, we inspired by Shriners. And so this is a breakdown of our go chair. And, um, but, Again, there's a, there's a, this is a huge discussion here of why that, but we have we we have options now, and we're getting better at this end in regards to providing options for um, a lifetime of mobility for those with uh, uh, impairments. So keep going. I think that's what that, and more to come on this as I learn, and and I am going to have to reach out into the community and ask for some mentors in regards to this, and then I have a great we have a great research at step research staff at, at Shriners Hospital that's been able to hold my hand a little bit and as well, great people around us. And so I am going to reach out into this community and ask a little bit more in regards to their help. But um, we're clinicians first at Shriners. And so we, even the timing, but we do, our goal is access and, and uh, success of our success for our patient and our family. So more to come. I want to share one more video in regards to that. This is my daughter, Navy, and she is three years old, and she has arthrogryposis. Um, she, we've been coming to Shriners Hospital since she was born. You know, we went into this unknown 
right? As anybody would. You have a, a, a small child that you want the best for. And you want to be able to, as a parent, to do the very best for them. And Sadie and I, not having a clue of which direction to go, of how to best help Navy. Well, I never really thought that um, that she would be in a wheelchair. You know, our goal has always been to, if she can walk, to get her to walk. And so when they started talking about the wheelchairs, I felt like, oh, wait a second, like the baby bug is just, you know, on the ground. And, she, you know, this was, it was just supposed to be temporary, right? People feel that we're giving up on ambulation or walking or mobility in general. Actually, we're encouraging it and we're, we want to be able to teach the children the benefits of mobility by able to participate in it by themselves. And we will, we're, we would be willing to argue that that will encourage independent mobility outside of the wheelchair. It's helped her in independence so much. Um, we, me and my husband talk all the time how it's so different when kids and kids are playing. If there's a grown up there and I'm sitting there with her while all of her cousins are playing or her friends, they don't play the same as they do when it's just kids. I think this chair has been an answer to a lot of our prayers in that aspect because it's been, as Sadie has mentioned, that it's been an independence thing for Navy. She's been able to do and grow for herself and not depending on Sadie, her mom or her dad or even her sister. She's able to connect with kids like on their level. This is also their level. When a grown up is carrying her, we're up, she's up in our arms. With power and mobility, especially early, if we are able to have the opportunity to actually just get the child in the power wheelchair and let them show what they are able to do, that makes parents uh, believers in what that tool is about. The more she was mobile, the more she could drive the chair to go do things, the better her speech developed and she started be saying more words and um, I just didn't realize that mobility and speech, her being able to go and do things when she wanted to do them, they helped each other, you know, out. The child has to participate in uh, hitting normal developmental milestones, whether it be with their own abilities or a piece of equipment. And I think that's really important to do so. You need to go and explore. You need to understand what it is to go around something or under something. You need to be able to touch things and get into a little bit of trouble, which is, it's really just investigation. And along with that comes everything else in regards to socialization, speech and language, and uh, relationships um, with others and then who you are individually. And mobility, early mobility is a big part of that. I don't know where we would be without Shriners. The opportunity we've been able to learn from the, the personnel here at Shriners, it's been, it's I mean, it's part of our family now, honestly. I would say to anybody who is hesitant or trying to start the early mobility, it is so, so worth it, even though it can be scary the first little bit. I like that video for the fact that, again, the critical discussions with families and so on. The kids will sell it if we get a minute. Um, again, Dr. Kenyon and her students that was a great lecture in regards to that that conversation is careful and but critical um and say and navy was going to be one of our first kids into the baby bug but the baby bug wasn't quite ready yet and so we transitioned her into that and uh yeah it's just a fun story i am I'm, I'm starting to close it up we want to kind of roll it in i funding cannot say thank you enough to shriners to allow um us just to be therapists and so we do, we, we have budgeted time or budget from the original endowment. And then we continue to try to keep that alive and we're making some changes and we're moving around to keep on being able to provide that as well. Uh, we have donations. We've discussed that to you. If you show the usefulness of what you're doing in the community and really that the Halloween clinic is uh, some cardboard um, PVC, PVC piping, um, a lot of duct tape and a lot of zip ties and a little bit of paint and people will donate to your cause and whatnot. And then grants, uh, you get into car seats and whatnot, there's monies out there that we like to put a lot of money into our cars and safety and roads and car seats can kind of fall into that. And so there, I know that there's places in your community and I can help you find that some little bit more in a general idea or whatnot. Um, the rest I might send to 
Matt and Laura Hollingshead in regards to donations and whatnot. Um, again, our goal, we need our young people to be successful. Um, this is Missy. Missy is now, um, oh, let me go back. Missy here, she's a senior. She's graduating this year, I want to say. Uh, West Jordan High School here in town. Um, this is success. This is success. Um, and this is her video. I'm just going to let it run as we close things up. Um, and this is what we're all doing. So let's not get tired. Let's keep pushing forward. Let's um, bust out the very difficult numbers to find out what we're doing and how objectively it works. Because we can And we have seen it clinically. And um, let's keep writing our appeals and our letters to the city fighting. Um, I'm going to have my contact information um, here. And if, uh, and if I do not have that, then uh, we'll do it. So if I don't have the answer, I'm going to leave it at that. And again, on our slides. Thank you so much, Scott, and thank you, Matt, for manning the chat. Um, I just want to read off the CEU code real quick. It is in the chat, but it is 77SYV seven, seven as in Victor 3. Um, thank you guys both so much. Um, it was a wonderful presentation, and we really appreciate all the work you guys have been doing over at Shriners. Oh, no, again, thank you, Courtney, and thank you, everybody. Um, I appreciate your time. Keep up the fight. Reference list, very not all inclusive. Thank you, everybody. Continue uh, travel safe and continue to have a great um, conference.